Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome. This is your boarding call for Broomstick Airways. We are leaving Barcelona and we are going to our next destination. Barcelona was interesting. Some people didn't like it. Some people just found it okay. But as long as you explored it in some way, that's fine. There's been lots of great pictures posted and the reason they picked the colours. I'll show you mine. So on Trev the Travelling Snake, which was about to there for Ireland, I did what as close as I could find colours to the um, stained glass in the Sagrada Familia, the church that is never finished, and a bit of black there at the end for the pigs that they breed for Amerigo ham, the most expensive ham you have ever tasted. It is beautiful. But anyway, that's what I did. Some stained glass and black pig on Trev. He's certainly growing. On Trixie, the temperature snake, well, Barcelona was cool to cold. And I do the high and the low. I can't remember what they were on the day. And of course, I didn't write it down, but I can look it up. So I did some more blue. Cooler, colder. So there you have it. Let's hope we're heading to some warmer climates. They're my two snakes. Trev the Travelling Snake, Trixie the Travelling Snake. So, where are we off to? Are you ready? Are you ready to drink some ouzo? Are you ready to try some beautiful olives? Sunshine, ocean. Yes, we are off to Greece and the Greek islands. The choice is yours. You can go to mainland Greece or you can go to the Greek islands. Many moons ago, Thing and I did a cruise, 21 days of the Greek islands. It was interesting because they have a lot of history and it was fun. I don't know if I do a 21 day cruise ever again. I've been on a cruise ship with a group of people for that length of time. It was a bit nerve wracking. It was quite a big cruise ship. Anyway, I thought I'd start with the, ma the mainland, the national symbols of Greece. The flower, depending on which site you read, is the bear's birch or the violet. Hopefully I have some pictures at the end of this video for you to check out. The animal is the beautiful dolphin. Who doesn't like a dolphin? The bird is the little owl. The food dish is moussaka. I make moussaka and I have not made it in over a year. So I gather we'll be having moussaka because the boys do like it. Export crop, the most popular export crop, of course, is olives. Now, to get the black olives, there is a certain way to do it. You don't, they're not grown black. It's all green olives. You'll have to check out olives. Mainland temperature during February. Um, the average highs around 10 to 13 C, average lows around 7 C. Today's mainland temperature was 13 Celsius or 56 Fahrenheit with a low of 6 Celsius, and, which is about 43 Fahrenheit. So the capital is Athens. No, we never went to Athens in 21 days. It's a coastal city in the Mediterranean and is both the capital and largest city of Greece with a population close to 4 million. It's also the seventh largest city in the European Union. Athens dominates and is, is the capital of the Attica region, is one of the world's oldest cities with its record history spanning 3,400 years. Its earliest human presence somewhere between the 11th or 7th millennia BC. Athens replaced the iris with the daffodil as their city flower around 2016. So it's the iris or the daffodil. A walk around Athens will let you see many important ancient sites from classical and the Roman times. I would have loved to have seen this and if I ever go back to Greece it'd be high on my bucket list. The Acropolis. The Acropolis was called the Sacred Rock, the most important ancient heritage of the country. 
It is also the trade mart and most famous site of Athens and of Greece. It has been the main attraction in Athens since the 5th century BC and is dedicated to Athena, the goddess of wisdom, protector of the city. There is also the Parthenon, the most famous ancient Greek temple ever. It stands proudly over the modern Mega, uh, metropolis of Athens, a reminder of great civilization was witnessed. The Acropolis can be um, seen from almost, almost every part of Athens. It was and still is, without a doubt, ultimate achievement of the city, classical and architectural glory. One of the things you could do on the mainland Greece if you visit the Acropolis and the Parthenon is explore Greek mythology and the Greek gods. There are so many Greek gods that have divided them into categories for ease of reference. So there's something for you to check out. So our Greek island cruise. Well, I can't remember in which order we went, but we did go to Santorini. It's an island in the southern Aegean Sea, about 200 kilometres or 120 miles southeast from Greece mainland. The island remains the home of a small but flourishing wine industry. It, for me personally, this is personal opinions, it is overrun with tourists during the tourist season. When we docked, there were four other large cruise ships in the port and around lunchtime you could barely move around Santorini without having to queue. It's famous for its donkey rides but unfortunately the tourists mistreat the donkeys and there's a lot of arguments with the donkey owners as to how they you know not to mistreat them but you can hire donkeys and ride them. No I didn't. For me, it was just too crowded and it was one of the less enjoyable islands for me. I know a lot of um, European people go there in summer for the sun, the sunshine, the relaxation, the nightlife. But no, I would not go back to Santorini. But check it out. It has beautiful architecture. You know, the Greek flag is blue and white and there's lots of blue and white in Santorini. One of the things we did... Um, thing and I is we booked a tour and we went out to the wine region which was a lot more fun the tour included lunch we got to try their wines which are very popular um, unfortunately the countryside hadn't had much rain so it was a bit dry and boring but the actual wine winery we went to was really interesting and the wine was lovely so that's Santorini Probably one of the better islands we went to was Mykonos. They say if the mention of Mykonos does not immediately bring to mind bright white buildings, turquoise skies and tan bodies lining golden sandy, beach, sandy beaches, you've been living under a rock. The most popular Greek island in the Aegean Sea is all about energy, attractions, a diversion, an upscale crowd that thrives on its stylish nightlife. Mykonos for me during the day was I loved exploring the architecture, the streets, the shops um, and you can get some privacy on the beaches if you go to the northern beaches. Um, the southern beaches is all about party, skiing, jet skiing, windsurfing, horseback riding, parasailing and then saving some energy for the nightlife. So I didn't mind Mykonos. One of the things I do remember was I wasn't crafting then, but it did kick off my crafting because in one of the shops, I saw a crocheted bag that was watermelon with beads on it. She'd use beads. And I thought I would get two for my nieces, but she'd only made one. and. The price she was asking was absolutely astronomical in euro. It was, and it was thing that said to me, you used to crochet, you could make that for less than a third of the price. And I went, yeah, I know. And I wanted to, for, they're like grandnieces. They're my niece's children. 
and I sort of went away. And it was after we got back from Greece, I the Greek island cruise, that I looked up YouTube and I found a bag lookalike on, of course, Bag O Day. And I crocheted it thinking of watermelon and using the beads and made two for my nieces. And I know when I sent them to WA, my um, or my grand nieces, my niece rang me and said, they have a little friend who wants one too. So I ended up making a third. And I sort of started crafting from then on. So Mykonos reminds me that I did start crocheting again after about 30 years of not. We also went to the island of Corfu, which is beautiful. It's very scenic with a lush landscape, beautiful with beautiful birds, most relaxed lifestyle, and of course, Prince Philip, who died in 2021 at the age of 99, was born on the dining room table of the Villa Mon Repos, situated on the coast of Corfu. And yes, we did a tour of the villa. Um, it's a lot smaller than you think, considering it was a principality um, residence, but it is beautiful and well-preserved. Um, very minimalistic furniture. The villa's French name means my rest, and most of the places are um, rest for Greek royals in the past century. Corfu was the place. I know down from the road of the villa, um, our tour guide explained there was a little, um, like, I, I, I don't know what you'd call it, nunnery, convent. And she was saying there are only four nuns left living there. And they still had a little veggie garden with the rest of the land overgrown. But she said once they go, that land will be sold and used for something else. Which I thought would spoil the area because it is in a beautiful place. But certainly you can explore the residence, my rest, where Prince Philip was born on the dining room table. Um, so I meant to get an album out, music playlist. Everyone goes, oh, I want some music. Famous to us here, and I don't know if it's in the Northern Hemisphere, is Nana Muscuri. Nana Muscuri, um, I, I know she competed for Greece in one of the Eurovisions, but back when we were a lot younger, she was quite popular. And there was a guy that Thing worked with that was older than him that was like her number one fan. And he used to say to me, I dread going out in a work car with him because all he listens to is Nana Muscuri. She is lovely. And there are some YouTube songs of hers. So there'll be a playlist for her. Now, this might make you laugh if you know who I'm talking about. But way back when, I was a fan of Demis Roussos. And I actually have him on vinyl. I know whenever Reeves gets it out, he cracks up. I can't believe you like this guy, McAfton. And there are music of his on the YouTube. So that'll be part of the playlist. And the other one, because I do like opera and classical music, and I do love her voice, is Maria Callas. And there's a couple of songs of hers on YouTube. So there'll be a bit of a playlist, but not the music you're probably expecting. So I hope you check out the music playlist and maybe the music will inspire you and your project. So in summary, you can go to Greece, drink ouzo, eat olives. I love um, vine leaves, stuffed vine leaves with a glass of wine late in the afternoon that would be my special treat um, you can lay on the beaches get a tan check out the dolphins if they're around there's so much to see in Greece and a lot of blue and white so let's try and think of I'm going to try and think of other colors besides green for olives blue and white for the flag let's see what I can come up with to put on Trev the traveling snake and hopefully when I do Trixie on the temperature day it's a little bit warmer and we get away from all these blues anyway guys i hope you enjoy greece and the greek islands entirely up to you where you go in greece i'm not going to pick a particular place this time but high on my list would be mykonos and corfu and if i had to do it over again 
I'd pick a cruise that stopped in Athens. So until next time, from my two traveling snakes, have fun, make sure you rest, relax, have a glass of wine. If you don't drink, there are beautiful juices. And yes, grease. Enjoy. Bye for now.